In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to air masses. An air mass is simply a large, massive body of air with similar characteristics throughout. In other words, all of the air in the air mass would have the same characteristics. So what kind of characteristics could air have? Well, there are three main ones. All of the air in an air mass will have the same approximate humidity, or amount of water vapor. All of the air in an air mass will also have the same approximate temperature. And because of varying temperatures and humidities, those will impact the pressure of the air. So you could have a very humid air mass that's very warm, and so it would therefore have low pressure. So how do air masses get their characteristics? Well, the way it happens is when a large parcel of air, a large chunk of air, remains stationary over a part of the Earth for a long period of time. The area of the Earth that it hangs out over is called the source region. And if air hangs over a source region, it will take on the characteristics of that region. For example, if an air mass were to hang out over a tropical beach, it would become warm and it would become humid because of the warm water. If an air mass were to hang out over the mountains of Glacier National Park, it would most likely have a low humidity because it's inland, it's not near any large body of water, and it would probably be a cooler air mass because we're at a much higher elevation. And if an air mass were to stagnate over this glacial lagoon in Iceland, obviously the air would be very cold, and because it's cold, it probably would not be that humid since we know that cold air um, does not carry as much moisture as warm air. So these are called the source regions, and they give the air mass the characteristics. Air masses are named, and they're classified. So we're going to learn how to name air masses, and we're going to learn how to classify them. And again, this is all based on where the air mass is coming from. There are a number of symbols that we use when we're naming air masses. The first two symbols are a lowercase c and a lowercase m. The C stands for continental, which means dry. So a continental air mass was hanging out over a continent for a long period of time. So it's going to be dry. M stands for maritime, which means related to the oceans or the seas. And so a maritime air mass is a wet air mass. So I want you to notice the C and the M again. These are going to be lowercase. And these two words or these two letters would show the humidity of the air mass. Now the other part of the name is going to be based on the temperature of the air mass. So there are three temperatures that we refer to with air masses. Capital T stands for tropical. So this is going to be a warm air mass that was stationary over a tropical region. If it's a cold air mass, we use a capital P, which represents polar. So think about air closer to the North Pole or the South Pole. That would be very cold. And if the air mass was hanging out in a really, really cold place, we use the letter A, capital A, which represents the word Arctic, which is very, very cold air. So what we do is we use these five symbols, these five words, and we can combine them in different ways to name air masses. So let's say there was an air mass that was called Maritime Tropical. Okay, lowercase m for maritime, capital T for tropical. What characteristics would it have? Well, the maritime means wet, tropical means warm. So this air mass is going to be warm and wet. What if an air mass was a continental polar air mass? Lowercase c for continental, capital P for polar. Well, continental means dry. Polar means cold. So this is going to be some cold and dry air. So let's practice this a little bit. Let's take a look at this map. Inside each of these ovals, we're going to see if we could name the air mass that would form there. Okay, so this first one is clearly over water, so it's going to be a wet air mass. And it's not near the equator. It's also not at the very top of the planet. So it's going to be cold. It's not going to be super cold. So that would be maritime polar. What about this one down here? 
Well, again, it's in the water, so it's going to be wet. It'll be maritime. And again, it's not near the equator. It's not in Antarctica. So it's going to be cold, not super cold. Again, maritime polar. How about this one in Africa? Well, it's on land, so it's going to be dry. So it'll be continental. And it's right on the equator, so it'll be warm. So continental, tropical. How about this one up in Asia, up near Russia? Well, it's over land, so it's going to be dry, so continental. And again, it's going to be a cold area. It's nowhere near the equator. So continental polar, lowercase c, capital P. Let's try this one over here. So it's on the water, so it'll be very wet or maritime. And again, it's right on the equator. So maritime tropical, MT. And last but not least, we have this one down here. So it's over Antarctica, which is ice. Antarctica is a desert, so it's going to be dry. So it'll be continental. And because it's over Antarctica, it'll be extremely cold. So continental Arctic. So I would like you on your sheet to see if you can name these six air masses. Use the two letter symbol. Make sure the first letter is lowercase and the second letter is capital. Pause the video and then come back after you've done it. Okay, so air mass number one is over the Pacific Ocean. It's up near Alaska. So because it's on water, it's maritime. Because it's cold, it's polar. Number two is on central Canada. So it's going to be dry or continental, and it's going to be cold or polar. Air mass number three is forming over the North Atlantic Ocean. So because there's an ocean, it's maritime, and again, it will be cold, it will be polar. Number four is forming over the Pacific Ocean, but it's near Mexico. It's closer to the equator, so the water there will be warm. So this would be maritime tropical. Air mass number five is forming over Mexico. So it will be dry and warm, continental tropical. And air mass number six is forming over the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean. And that is going to be wet and warm, maritime tropical. What I want you to realize is that there are constantly these air masses trying to converge, trying to come together over the United States. And this image here shows you some of these air masses that are constantly doing battle over our country, over our continent. And you'll notice there are definitely areas where these two air masses are going to collide into each other. They're going to crash into each other. Those areas are known as fronts, which we will get into tomorrow in class.